Hello, it's Doris with Aldi Books, and it is Thursday, which means I'm approaching the end of a very, are they all very chaotic work weeks that make me frazzled by the end of the week. So this week, um, I'm preparing for admissions testing on Saturday, which I'm not going to be here for because I have to go to PD training in Shenzhen, the big city, all weekend. We're leaving Friday right after school and coming back Sunday at like four, mm -hmm. maybe earlier, no, four. <laughs> and um, we have our benchmark exams, which are our quarterly network exams for, my, for all the kids, my first graders included, mine is tomorrow. Um, grades, obviously we're at a quarter, so grades are due. Um, and comments like first grade, you have to have comments for their award ceremony and then other comments, which may or may not be as spectacular uh, for their report cards. And what else? You know, it's a lot, it's always a lot. But anyway, I thought that I would, since, you know, I'm feeling hectic and we're also approaching the end of the month. We're, we're at mid-month, but not the bashing part after the bash, you know, the downhill slide of mid-month. So I gotta keep the videos coming. So we're going to, I've printed out all of your delightful questions. They are just awesome questions. You guys are so much better at asking questions than I am. So thank you. Um, so this may be most likely will be two parts. So I'm just gonna answer questions until I get to, you know, the 10 or 15 minute mark. And if there are any hard questions, I'm gonna skip them. Let me get that highlighter. I knew I had it for a reason. I'll skip the hard questions so I can answer them in the next one, okay? But I'll answer them. There's a great questions. Anyway, um, this is from Tanya. Hey Doris, she is my needlework and bookish life now, I think. Yes. Um, hey Doris, what is your favorite short story collection that you think I would enjoy? So, I'm not really so much into short stories, but um, I remember reading uh, Lauren Groff her collection called Florida. There are a lot of gorgeous short stories in that collection. And I myself am a native Floridian. She is not, she is a transplanted Floridian, but she really got Florida, North Florida, my part. So loved that. And um, Anthony Doerr of um, was it all the light we cannot see, I think? Um, he has a short story collection. I don't remember the name of it. I think it's got seashells on the front. But anyway, Anthony Doerr, D-O-E-R-R. Uh, his short story collection is also really nice. Um, it has a little bit of a feminine edge, uh, feminism vibe, I remember, which I thought was really cool because he's a dude. But anyway, and also this isn't a collection, but I haven't read any of Sally Rooney's novels because I'm like 98% sure that they're not my kind of read. But she has one of those little mini um, books that's a short story that, you know, the ones I was reading with Sean the Book Maniac years ago. And it's funny, I can say years ago at this point about booktube. Anyway, her short story, Faber, it, Faber is the publisher, um, is really good. Like Mr. Money, I think, something like that. Anyway, okay, enough about short stories. Thank you for the question, Tanya. Um, Run Right Reads, this is Karen. I love the dress, Doris. Big heart. Karen. Wait till you see my Chinese New Year dress. It is gorgeous. I haven't tried it on yet, but I'm 98% sure it's gonna fit and I love it. So, 
anyway. Uh, my question, what do you do with your journals and notebooks? I have a box with notebooks and diaries and I don't think I have been keeping them as assiduously as you do. So please share. How are you storing your memoirs? So, true confessions. I was a scrapbooking queen uh, back in the day. I did scrapbooking probably hardcore for about 20 years, like published in magazines and stuff. Um, and I have like over 20 full-size mega scrapbooks. <clears throat> All of my angel baby um, who, I won't say he could care less, but he doesn't care that much. So, but I don't mind, like, I really enjoyed making them. I enjoyed the creative outlet. I enjoyed the learning process of, you know, all these different art and photography and graphic design techniques um, that I learned while doing those. And the social network in scrapbooking was strong at the time, and I wouldn't have made it as a single mom without those people supporting me. So as a single mother living away from my family. So, um, yeah, but to answer your question, all of those are in a trunk or a box. I didn't even pack them up myself. My, my scrapbooking friend did um, in a storage unit in Tennessee. Um, also in the same storage unit, I also started doing Traveler's Notebook, which are the oblong shaped ones. Um, those are all in a shoe box. They fit nicely. I, I found a shoe box that they exactly fit. It's a man sized shoe box, but yeah. And then I have some Hobonichis. I have, I think three of those and some bullet journals, which term, and they're all in boxes. They are all in boxes. So, and the journals that I finished last year in China, they're in a drawer in my nightstand. So. Sorry, Karen, I am um, prob probably no more organized than you are about this, but really enjoyed the process, really enjoyed the process. And here is a sweet moment. So I kept just journals in a little spiral bound notebook the year that I lived in Guatemala 30 years ago. And, you know, somebody told me, a good friend from church told me, keep a journal, Doris. And I wasn't a journaler. Um, I didn't do that at the time. This was, I was like 22. And, but I kept journals that year because it's a big experience to graduate from college and move to a foreign country and teach school there. So, kept these journals. And um, that's where I met Brent. He was the principal at the school that I taught at, the headmaster. And um, it was really cute reading those and seeing our little budding ro romance um, and how it fizzled at the end. But, you know, when we reconnected on Facebook, I was able to dig up those journals and reread them, and it was just a delightful experience. So, highly recommend journal keeping, you know? It's not for everybody all the time, but Sometimes it's cool and I'm enjoying it this year. So, in my take a note planner from Taiwan, which is sold out, I will definitely be ordering it again next year because I love it. Anyway, um, this is draw your books. Um, so many questions to ask. Where are we? Oh, we're at nine minutes, we're good. What is your favorite and least favorite thing about China? What was the biggest culture shock moving there? And what was the biggest reverse culture shock when you went back to visit the States? You seem to be enjoying yourself a lot in China. Was it hard to get to that point of comfort? Do you wish you spoke Chinese? Or is it not really necessary in the environment you were in? Any future traveling plans in the area? I loved your Vietnam vlogs. Oh, thank you, thank you. Man, I'm having the best time traveling. I am going to save this one because this is a fabulous question that I need to devote more time to. I think a lot of the specific to China questions I will save for later. Um, traveling plans though, um, 
in the area. So China or Asia, I will go with. So we're going to Taiwan for Chinese New Year. Um, Brent's niece is meeting us there from Canada. So that's going to be fun times. And we will probably take her to Hong Kong and or Macau. Um, so Hong Kong has the British influence and Macau has the Portuguese influence, but they're really close to where we live. And um, we don't know if she'll be able to get a Chinese visa on entry. She had one, but she had to get her passport renewed because she used too many pages in it, like imagine. <laughs> anyway, um, so we don't know if she's gonna get Chinese on entry visa. Things are in the process of changing. If she does, we will um, maybe go to Beijing and see the Forbidden City and the Great Wall. We will definitely take my son Gabriel there at some point in time. Not sure yet because he's got to get a Chinese visa as well. Um, but yeah, and we hope to go to Thailand again because I have friends there, a student that I taught in middle school like 25 years ago and her parents, um, but Thailand was just charming, so charming. Anyway, um, uh, Dee Dee from Brown Girl Reading, that's more China questions. I'll save those for later. Um, I love your dress, so gorgeous. Stewie Griffin fan, thank you. Um, I don't, this might be the last one because we're at 12 minutes. Um, yeah, so let me answer this one because it's about books and then we'll do some more next time. So my questions, how do you feel about millennials and older Gen Zers reading romance these days? So I don't understand that question to be honest. So if you understand the question, let me know. Cause I think there's something going around book two that I haven't been watching. So I don't have the information that I need to answer that question. I will say that's probably the reason I haven't read Sally Rooney and I'll just leave it there. Um, and I think it's interesting this new category on Goodreads about roman uh, romanticy, the fantasy romance mix. But anyway, I think my son's Gen Z and he and I get along really well. I think Gen Zers and Gen Xers get along really well. I don't know about the millennial angle, but anyway. Anyway, I, I can't answer any more about that question. But she says, if you could invite five famous authors for dinner, which ones would you pick and why? And have you tried to learn Chinese when you were in high school? So we're gonna leave a Chinese topic for later because a lot of people are asking me about the Chinese and I'm gonna leave you hanging about that one. But um, authors to dinner. So, um, oh God, I would definitely have the woman that wrote Salt, Salt to the Sea. Oh God, what's her name? Obviously didn't, these are off the cuff answers, so full honesty, the best I can remember. But um, you know who I'm talking about. She's very, she's a middle grades author. And I had the great honor of sitting next to her at um, a dinner for librarians in Tennessee. So I myself was not a librarian, but I have a policy of becoming besties with the librarians in any school I work at. Um, that just really works for me. Uh, I recommend it if you're a teacher. But anyway, so I went to the conference with them because, you know, who wouldn't want to do that? That's fun times. Uh, just to the dinner portion. And we just got lucky and we sat at the keynote speaker's table, which was this author whose name I cannot remember at the moment. Um, and I sat next to her and Gosh, she's a wonderful, wonderful person. Like, she's so intelligent, so knowledgeable about so many things. And 
Her platform is to write about obscure moments in history, many of which she has personal connections to. And she deliberately chooses, like she could write, like she could write for adults, but she chooses to write for middle school students because she wants to connect with them and educate them and just touch their lives. And I just love her. I do. Even though I cannot remember her name at the moment. Because that's how my memory works. But who else would I pick? Um, Ann Patchett might be fun in that mix. She's a pretty cool person too from Tennessee as well. And, you know, let's just go crazy with the Tennessee angle and throw um, Dolly Parton into the mix because if you don't know how much of an impact Dolly Parton has in young people's lives, it, like in many lives, in your own life, um, I mean, she has the, the little, um, I forget what it's called, but she, she like her nonprofit and she herself donates books to children all over Tennessee, the United States and the world, just getting books in the hands of children um, from birth to five years old, they get a book every month. I mean, how awesome is that? If you just sign up for the program, you know? But she's got books out. Um, I think they're ghostwritten, but who cares? She is awesome. Um, and then also with Tennessee, let's go with um, another author whose name I cannot recall, but he has a book, a really big one, <laughs> that came out this year um, that is really popular, something with water in the title. And he's got another book that was really lauded called Cutting for Stone, I believe. But the one that I noticed him for was his nonfiction. Uh, he's a doctor, a medical doctor as well. But uh, his nonfiction about um, his time in Tennessee, rural Tennessee, and during the AIDS crisis, and how he was one of the first doctors that um, would, would treat the patients, because not all of them would. Doctors, that is. Um, so I will leave all of these, these five um, people in the description box, because as soon as I hit the button, their names will come to me. Anyway, and then number five, let's go with uh, David George Haskell, who is my favorite nature writing author of all time. He is so, like he knows his stuff. He's a university professor in uh, botany slash biology in Tennessee, um, but he's originally from the UK. Um, but so knowledgeable, but so literary, like every word is packed with meaning and beautiful and impactful and oh, his books are gorgeous. So yeah, I think that would be like a dang fun dinner party. Like I can't even imagine how awesome that would be. So I will leave these people in the description box and, um, film another one of these. This might have to be a three-part series because I only answered like three questions or four, three and a half. I don't know. Thanks so much for watching and I'm going to get back to work, but I'll be back soon. Bye.